What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel, The Bear, season two, episode number four. And the drama feels like it's really building up. Yes. This show does a phenomenal job of... I was talking about this show to someone who hasn't seen it before the other day and trying to describe like the short episodes, but feeling like the pacing is so insane yeah. that it's like you're not consuming a 25, 30 minute episode. You're consuming what feels like a 40 minute episode in 25 minutes. And it's just the way they tell their story. The pacing of the episodes are amazing. And coming off an episode where Carmi and Sydney are talking about, hey, let's go change our taste buds or hit a reset button or whatever it is that they do with that kind of thing. Right. They were planning on meeting somewhere. Carmi kind of ghosted her. is like, go do your thing, take the day off, whatever, go do whatever you got to do. She proceeded to go restaurant hopping and trying a bunch of stuff and observing a bunch of things. Talking to everybody. Having conversations with people that she knows. It seems like she had relationships with them. And something stemming off of the conversation that she had with her father talking about trusting your partner and it's one of those things where that has been hit so hard now that as an audience member watching this show it's almost impossible to not have a thought that right. Carmi's gonna screw her over somehow and it's one of those thoughts where I'm like no like it ain't gonna go down like like no oh, like Carmi's been presented a certain way I don't I don't see him doing that. No, but like also when you think about it, Sydney, like she, when you tell her like, yes, she goes, you know, 10 feet over the line. Yeah. Did she go too far? Did she do too much? I like, don't. Is Carmi that into it as she is into it? And is like, is she doing way more than what she should be doing for somebody that's not like officially a partner? I mean, Carmi's the owner. Like right. that, I guess the details aspect of the partnership hasn't really been revealed. It's like, he's the owner. He's the one who's going to be financially responsible for everything. She's in a certain role that is going to essentially be leading everything. Right. So it's just where exactly is the balance because it doesn't feel 50-50 right now, but certain responsibilities carry a lot more weight. So just finding out the balance and exactly what the deal is, I think is important from, especially after last episode, where like one of the chefs that Sydney was talking about talked about profit sharing and like what percentages of this and that. And so that felt like something that was obviously important and needs to be discussed. But then Sydney shows up to the restaurant, everything's destroyed. Like, they got to open walls, they knock stuff down, they have more problems than they had anticipated. And Carmi didn't mention anything to Sydney. And it's like, the way Carmi mentioned it, I felt like kind of sucked. Yeah. It's like, what, tell you something that has to be done regardless? Like, yeah, sure. Like, it's not it's something that needs to be decided upon. It's something that just needs to be informed. If something happens that's out of our control, you would expect me to tell you. Yeah. Like... It's not necessarily just, hey, I needed your decision or input on this. It's just tell me what happened. I don't want to walk into the restaurant and have it be an open format now where it's like, that wasn't the plan. Or maybe <laughs> like me, when you have ADHD and you just forget to tell the person. Yeah. Stuff. So it feels like. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Shit. I was just dealing with it. Yeah, I forgot to tell you. For sure. It feels like one of those things because, again, I just didn't love the way Carmi brought it to her as the reasoning. And then the whole, like you mentioned this feeling yeah. kind of like unimportant in that moment. Just like, just stop talking about it kind of thing. Let it go. I didn't love that aspect of it. But on the flip side, it's just. What are you going to do? I don't what know. Do? Yeah, it's a, it's a difficult thing, but I'm always. I'm always going to side on the over communication aspect of relationships, whether it's business or personal communicate. You're never going to hurt someone by communicating. The person will be informed to send a quick test. Hey, by the way, our walls are fucked. They got to come down. There's no cool, way around cool. it. Like you just send that text message real quick and it's like, okay, informed. Like there's nothing you can do about it. But I feel like Sydney's now in a place hearing the information from her dad, hearing it from other people in her industry that she has relationships with that I assume she trusts and values their their word. Well, I mean, somebody was like, look at me. If that doesn't work out, come work for me. And this, it sounds so like asshole. Like you could just go get another job. Right. But like Carmen can't. Like his I mean, he could. life is technically dependent, not with the money he owes. Right, he owes a lot of money. It's like, not like you can just go get another job. Yeah. He's like so fucking in it. Like there would be such a mess to clean up. She could literally just walk away. Most of them could. Yes. But it's one of those things where I'm wondering if all those conversations 
have now become the majority of her thought process. Is she going to now start questioning Carmi? Is she going to yeah. start questioning their relationship and their partnership and where the restaurant's going and the direction of everything? What is going to happen with Claire in that whole situation? It feels like a character that was introduced to provide a distraction to Carmi during a time where no distraction can be had. Right. Especially when their motto on the board written in big letters is every second matters or every second counts. I always forget which one. But every second is important in terms of their build because of the timeline Carmi created. I'm just wondering how much of this is going to come now between everything that's been said to Sydney about partnership and now this new character possibly coming in to distract Carmi and now add to the fact that we're not dealing with just a simple restructuring of a restaurant. You completely did a re-gutting and got to rebuild and got to like clear a bunch of stuff with probably a bunch of people to come evaluate stuff. So yeah, it feels like a lot of shit building and this show builds drama amazingly. Oh my God. Are you ready for this episode? Yes. Let's go. Jesus. Yep, I'm already stressed out. Demolition permit, H, oh my goodness. There's a lot. This is a lot. Oh my God. <laughs> Fuck my life to death, yep. As of now, we are seven weeks out. Our DBA just got rejected. Fire suppression hasn't shown up yet. We have to schedule a second deep clean because our building's now considered a biohazard. Oh my God. Why, why did we get rejected? Well, because we filed for a new name. Because we never filed for a first name. They, Mikey, weren't operating correctly because they were never doing business as. So now we have to file to do business as the bear and pay a fine for not doing business as the beef originally. It's all another money thing, Carm. Uh, how fast can we do a deep clean then? Not until tomorrow, I don't think. Holy shit. <laughs> oh, fuck. The DBA is stressing me out. She still hasn't told anyone that she's pregnant? Don't tell anyone. This is my problem, and I don't want this to change anything. I don't want to be treated any different. And I'm only telling you because, I don't know, just, just in case. And don't take this like I'm not excited, because I am so excited. <laughs> I just I don't want anyone to know. Sure. Okay? Like, I really don't want Richie to know. Okay. It feels more in my control to decide <laughs> when and who pregnant and everybody knows oh no knew it. shut up richie oh, i fucking hate it when people say that shit <laughs> oh no while i'm there oh, i gotta come up with three really great desserts you got any ideas he's such a sweet man i'm a little nervous about it because i really don't want to mess it up but i am excited well, I'm gone. Christy's here. Chester's here. And I'm always a call away if you need anything. It's not great timing for him to be leaving. And whatever it is, you can call me at any time. I'll be she awake. Okay? I have my phone right by me. I got her. I'd be stressed out, too. I know. Because you, then you're going to feel like it's your fault you weren't there. I would be so free. This is like... I am so just in awe of anybody who could travel alone and not knowing shit about where you're going. Same. That would be absolutely terrifying to me to the point where I wouldn't do it. I just wouldn't know where to go because I just wouldn't know. That looks fucking good, though. Damn it, this show. Every single every time, time, I'm starving. And all the food looks incredible oh, every time. I'll eat any of it. All of it. Even the stuff I wouldn't normally eat. I love the music choice, though. What, the Griswolds? The Griswolds. Yeah. Proud of you, bud. Proud of you. Getting out there. It's a massive that. step for him. Yeah, it is. I love this for him. Is this the Airbnb? Uh, 
<laughs> awesome. <laughs> He's gonna live on a boat. I'm like, can I take it for a ride? Gotta feed the dog. Oh, he looks happy. That looks sweet. You just wanna like give Marcus a big old hug. And tell him it's gonna be all right. Is that eyebrows? That's eyebrows. I'm Marcus Brooks, I'm from. I know, I'm Luca. It sure feet. is. Start at 5 a.m. The section's at the end of the bench. Eyebrows. Every second counts, <laughs> yep. He looks good in this. He looks like he's grown up. He's like a man. So that's six o'clock. That's always facing the guests. Yes, sir. Does he have an accent naturally? Let me try. Nuzzle that slither into the pudding just to lock it in. Not clockwise, sir. Start the same way. Uh, yes, sir. Mm. No, again, chef. So I'm a little, a little nervous. Worse. I'd be afraid to just stick it in there, you know? Just be confident about it. Don't second guess yourself. Yes, sir. You got this, Marcus. You know how to make cheese slow like? Yes, sir. I'd be like, I'm so sorry, what? <laughs> oh, he's Googling it right now. What the fuck is dextrose? Recipe. Thank you, chef. <laughs> That's a little bit too thick, so just add some more pineapple juice. Good, chef. Next, why? Uh, the thicker it is, the stronger it is. So too thick and it overpowers the other components. You do that with a thin slice of marzipan and a caramel cracker. It sounds good. It's a nice dish. I think this would be great for Marcus. I'm so excited for him. It is always interesting having a certain experience with an actor and then hearing them in a different accent. Your resume is incredible. Thank you. When can I talk to the chef? You are. So we're just looking for someone who can commit to a pretty full schedule. Heard, I'm there. You are hired. You ever made ice cream before, chef? No, chef. One, two? A chef. Not really. <laughs> so orange. Making ice cream from scratch. Away. Back. The attention to details that chefs have to deal with is just next level. Mm -hmm. Try again. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nope, again, chef. Nope, worse. Again, chef. I'm waiting for him to like explode, like raise his voice, yell. He seems pretty calm-mannered so far. The place I'm staying at is a boat. <laughs> oh, the restaurant is beautiful. It smells really good in there. I'm really happy I'm here. I hope so, poor guy. When you're comfortable, jump in. Don't try to be a hero and then fuck it up. Yes, sir. Like operation. All right. He's got a sense of humor. Yeah, okay. he played along. That's good. I'm a little. I was a little scared about it. Whoa! It kind of tastes like a um minty snack as well. <laughs> That's crazy. I love it. It's like for Marcus, like you only want like really good things to happen to him. Hey, Marcus! Brookson! How good is Brooks. Copenhagen? Dude, it's so sick out here. I'm living on a boat right now. What up, Brooks? Yeah, ask him. Ask me what? Okay, the fire suppression guy is here right now. When was the last time you guys did this? I think never. No secrets. <laughs> this club pops, but you can't turn the gas on, and Carmi is literally gonna go full loose boots on us. It's not gonna pop. That's gonna pop. It is it's not gonna pop! It's popping! It popped! All right, well, talk to you later. <laughs> oh my God. I love it. I don't actually think there is a fucking cat. Oh, it's a cat. Is 
Is that bad? That nothing's been eaten? So how long you been a cook? About a year and a half. You? 14 years now. So you started when you was three? Uh, close enough, yeah. Did you go to school for this? I didn't, no. I didn't do too well in school. I'm in quite a bit of trouble. Ditched the check. Is that his natural me. accent? I My washed God. dishes and uh, I loved it. What about you? Needed a job. There's a lot of other jobs. I worked at the phone company for like five years and then McDonald's. I played Division Three football in college. Oh, shit. Yeah, Division Three football. Let's go. Side linebacker. Hey, say, Marcus. You loved it. Yeah, I loved it. And it paid for school, but nowhere really to go after. And four years ago, my mom got sick, so I was trying to find a better job. I always used to get lunch at this beef spot, and the owner was, he was really tight, but also really out of his fucking mind. <laughs> Stopped making Big Macs, and I learned how to make bread. How's your mom doing? They say the expectancy was only a couple of years. That was four years ago, so. Wow. I just try to spend as much time with her as I can. You're an only child? No, a younger brother. You? Uh, yeah, I got a younger sister somewhere, yeah. Aww. We're getting into the emotional stuff. How'd you get good at this? Honestly, I made a lot of mistakes. I think as I started early, I got my skill set up really quick and then started to feel like I was really the best. And then I started at this really great place as a commie. This other chef started the same day as me. I thought we were competition, but really we weren't. Like, he was better than me, much, much better than me. Worked harder, faster. It was the first time I realized that I wasn't the best. Wow. Looking at it like it was a good thing. Like at least I knew who the best was now and I could take that pressure off myself. And the only logical thing to do was to try and keep up with it. I never left this guy's sight. And you got better. I got better than I ever thought I possibly could be just from trying to keep up with him. That's like a great Pippen. mentality right Honestly, there. Honestly, I love Pippen. it. Scotty Pippen. You Scott. like that with Michael Jordan. Who's Michael Jordan? Oh my oh, goodness. I know, I know you know who Michael Jordan <laughs> is. Yeah, no, we've heard of him in London. <laughs> I was like, what? I was like, Scotty. But he was a Hall of Famer though. Honored. No, I think at a certain stage, it becomes less about skill and it's more about being open. To, to the world, to yourself, to other people you know most of the incredible things i've eaten haven't been because the skill level is exceptionally high or there's loads of mad fancy techniques it's because it's been really inspired i can't get over how awesome his hair is i'm so sorry you can spend all the time in the world in here but if you don't spend enough time out there right you know i love this talk helps have good people around you too so was it worth it the time you put in i don't know ask me tomorrow <laughs> I mean, that kind of mindset, like coming to that kind of realization could like crush someone and make them not want to work anymore. Yeah, make them like bitter and. But it pushed him to work harder and yes. be like, I'm going to learn from this dude. I'm going to follow this dude. Can we all have that mindset? It's not always a competition. It could always be a learning experience, though. Yeah. Everything's a learning experience. I'm and I'm learning how hungry I am right now by watching all the food. <laughs> I don't love traveling, but the best aspect for me when I travel is eating the food. I'm all about the food in places that I like to go. I love that he's doing this. Oh my God, I can't, I just can't get over it. Sightseeing alone. The way that they write, Marcus, that you just love him. Yeah, he's an insanely likable dude. <laughs> Has he been in anything else that we've watched? Not that I know of. Yes. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. What the hell? The dude crashed his bike? Are you all right, man? <laughs> oh. Holy shit. Yeah. All right. Ah. Sorry, sorry. Uh, you roll under. Why is the music? I know, it feels so dark and ominous. You all right? You got blood, man. You all right? Yeah. I think we 
all needed that. All right, this music softened. The way the music was playing made it sound like it was like a trap. Yeah. Like he was going to I think Copenhagen is one of the safest cities though. So Yeah, I don't I don't have any And knowledge. then he's good. Hey. What's up? Oh, so, hello. Wait, can you hear me? Hello? It's um it's like being weird. I feel like every time I try to talk I'm like Yeah. Like, yeah. Like that. Call me European Marcus. That's my name. That's what everyone calls me out here. Fancy now. What are you reading? Oh, this old thing? Coach K, the greatest comeback of all time. Why does everybody know that? Sydney is Coach K. Why are you saying his name like it's Martin Luther King Jr.? He's like a college basketball coach. <laughs> they had a minute left, and they kept their composure. He made a bunch of decisions. It was very cool. They won. Sports. <laughs> Sounds like how I would say it. Yeah, sorry I'm not there to help. You do not need to be here at all. I'm really happy that you're over there. I do feel a little guilty, though, not being home. I don't know, I keep having this nightmare that Christy's calling me, telling me that my mom's dead. Dude, Marcus, don't do that. I, I get that. But also, she's okay. She's with people who care about her and are taking care of her. You deserve to be enjoying yourself. I miss you, man. I miss you, too. Hello? Hello? Sid? <gasps> Sorry, I didn't actually freeze. <laughs> right, I'm going to sleep. I'll talk to you later. Okay, my dude. The thing that gets me about all these fancy dishes, they're so small. I know, but that ain't gonna do to, that's gonna do nothing to my appetite. You're supposed to just taste it. It's supposed to be like a good you know, That's like a bite. Be like next. <laughs> you're not supposed to overindulge. Look at you. Be like next. <laughs> See? One bite. He just freaking put that shit down. And that's Aww, the episode. That's so sweet. Very heavy Marcus episode. Loved it. I the more we get with this dude, the more it makes it impossible to not love him. Oh my god, absolutely. You just want to hug him like a big old teddy bear. Like even when he's just kind of been like there doing things on the side of the other stories that have been playing out, he's just he's so likable. And now being able to spend an entire episode with him, it's just great. Hearing the conversation with the one chef that he was there with. Luca. Luca. And just, I was a little nervous at first because we've been given like a little bit of a track record of chefs teaching being a little intense. Yeah. Being and like mad at you and you're just trying and yeah. you're like, ah, oh, God. So when Marcus started having conversation outside of the food and Luca embracing it, I'm like, all right, this this dude's cool. Like, he's good. And then when he, like, did the joke and with the whole operation thing, and he was like, all right, Luca's awesome. Like, yeah. I think this is going to be a good thing for Marcus very much. Yeah. And because it's like you're kind of sitting on the edge as he's, like, trying to put this little piece of something into and this. And he's, meat. like, telling him it's worse. Yeah. Like, but, like, he does it in oh, such, no. like, he does it in such a calm, just, like, mellow demeanor where it's like. Don't be afraid. I of was this. just waiting for him to be like, fucking, you suck at this. Like, you're doing it wrong! Where he's just like, no, worse, try again. No, okay, no, do it again. The calm demeanor is so appreciated. Yeah. Because it's you like... You don't have to be an asshole to get your point across. 100%. I needed that on a shirt. That's... Uh, that, I need that on a shirt. You don't saying. have to be an asshole to get your yeah, point across. That's a good saying. So this whole bike crash thing... It was very interesting. I... The music made me nervous about the situation, but... It ended in a positive, very caring type of way. I don't know if that's something that's going to come back later because the show has already proven to like give you something and then pay it off later. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's going to be something that, I mean, 
Is it just a way of showing how much Marcus cares about people? How many people would have stopped to help that dude? Like, is it just to show his temperament as like his, uh, as a soft hearted dude willing to help? Or is it going to be something that comes back to him later, whether positive or negative? Mm -hmm. The music was an interesting, co like it made you, and the music in this show is usually really great. It was building the anxiety of something happening. Yeah, I was worried that he was going to get mugged or something. Yeah, that was my know. that was my guess, and it just ended with the big hug, and then he patted him on the head. We're not used like, to like good things happening exactly. for when you know. Which is why my first reaction to Clara was to question her. It's like we watch a lot of pretty wild things, and if you don't know, haven't watched a bunch of our stuff. I never trust new characters, regardless of the environment that we're in. Mm -hmm. It's just like, why are you here? What, what's your real motive? What do you What do you want with him? Like, what What are you trying to accomplish? Yeah. And it's never just a Hey, our, what's our up? Character. Like, I missed you. Yeah. yeah. So like when when she showed up to Carmi and then the first conversation was about helping her move and the fact that she went digging for the phone number, I'm just like, why? Mm -hmm. Huh? Like that's just that's Isn't just that me. Sad? That's just me as Isn't a that that's just me like watching a show. It's just the way it goes because we've been burned by so many new characters showing up and hurting our main cast. So it's just even in a show like this where it's not necessarily violent, even though there's been a couple moments of violence, it's just it's in the back of my mind all the time. It's Same, just I mean, I think things. about it, but... Mm -hmm. And then when I'm know. wrong, I'm like, awesome. It yeah. turned out to be a great thing, so we'll you're, see. You're expecting the worst, hoping for the best. Yes, that's how I live my life. You prepare for the worst, hope for the best. Mm -hmm. And things usually don't ever work out the worst, and you're pleasantly surprised in the end. But I'm always expecting the best and absolutely devastated when it doesn't work out. Yeah, it's like um, MJ in Spider-Man. It's like, when you don't expect stuff, you can't be hurt by it. Oh, but, sad. Yeah. Oh, knife, turn. Exactly. God. That saying was pretty harsh. That's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shit. Like, she ended up turning around on it at the end, but still. Spoiler. That saying was pretty <laughs> wild. But Marcus, it feels like this is going to be such a massive opportunity of growth for him. Bring back something that's going to be delicious. Hopefully a little bigger. Stop it. That's the way it's supposed to be. I know. It's supposed to be just like a sweet treat and then like fucking us as Americans overdo the shit. When I want a dessert, I want a giant piece of cake. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or a huge bowl of ice cream. That's I don't want. got in this problem. Like, I don't want a one bite dessert, but Imagine I get that's the way it like, goes. simpler and like you could enjoy it and I better have seven. Savor it. There better be seven courses if it's going to be one bite oh, size meal. Oh, yeah, meals. probably. Yeah. So that's obviously I don't do fine dining and I still like even if I go to a nice place, give me a giant steak. Huge I'm fucking plate hungry of steak. now. Shut yeah, I mean it's lunchtime. It. We've been watching the show a lot during lunch, which is lunchtime yeah, right now. So twelve thirty six. It always happens yeah. that way. Mm -hmm. But I mean the fact that there's just absolute chaos and mayhem back at the restaurant, it seems Carmi's like keeping his cool about shit. He doesn't seem to be freaking out yet. I well, feel the like way he was looking at Natalie when she was like telling him that she's pregnant. He's like, uh huh, looking at her belly. And then he uh -huh. figured like halfway uh -huh. through that rant. Well, he, like, I think he I'm sure he it. knew before <laughs> she was willing to say. But, but if she would have just spit it out, everyone wouldn't have known because the wall fell down. Yeah. <laughs> As she was revealing, literally, I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. Yeah. And the one person she didn't want to know, Richie's like, hey, I knew it. <laughs> Do not. Everyone always knows it. Do not tell a freshly, I don't care how far along you are in your pregnancy. If you don't know she's pregnant, let her fucking tell you. And also don't say, I knew it. Right. Because you didn't. It's not about you. It's about the. Shut up. It's about the new pregnant lady. Talk, so. That's some bullshit. And don't be saying, is there twins in there? Oh my God. <laughs> I'm a fucking rock you. <laughs> oh my God. Total tangent. Um, I thought this was another, again, the show, these episodes are so short, but the pacing and the information that they give you is so good. And I'm just, I'm wondering where this is going to go. Like, I feel like this is going to take Marcus to like another level to what it feels like. I hope so. so. I hope so. I love him so much. Yeah. He's a fantastic character. That I want to hang out with him. Like this is another negative aspect of my thought process when watching these shows. The fact that he left and he's having these nightmares about his mom. I know. Like, it feels I like know. it's 100% going to happen while he's away. I don't want Which would be just happen. absolutely soul-crushing. But I, I, this is going to come off, like, really shitty. But, like, you still have to live your life. 
I, it makes me so incredibly sad. But do you think that in my hospital bed, if I'm dying, that I want you to be sitting there your whole life waiting for me? Yeah. No. I mean, go live your life. And the fact that you're she's, young, go. The fact that you're she's not. gone two years past the expectation is yeah. pretty incredible. Yeah. But like, as soon as he left and all of his like mom stuff played into the beginning. I'm like, that's where my brain went. So I know. fingers crossed that something bad doesn't happen while he's away and that he yeah. just learns and comes back smarter and gets to be with his mama. Just for future reference, if I'm ever dying in a hospital bed, go live your life. Okay. Visit sometimes. Noted. But go. Anything else? Don't sit here with me. No. We're okay. done. You guys, share all your comments. Leave those <laughs> thoughts. What do you think about Nikki's tangents? Tangents with Nikki. Tangents with Nikki. I, yes. need, a, I need a graphic. Okay. I'm right on top of that, Rose. No, you're not. <laughs> Leave your thoughts. We'll see you later for the next one. Have a good one. Bye.